I didn't exactly plan it this way, but it looks like we'll be taking a tour of the Abrahamic faiths this week. Because while there are plenty of disagreements these three religions are willing to chop each other's heads off about, one thing that they can all agree on is that women are subhuman servants created so that faithful adherents would have somewhere warm to put their dick at night. We'll start with possibly the mildest reprimand I've ever given to Muslims on this segment, but it's a story that still pissed me off nonetheless. This one comes to us from Canada and involves a group of pissy Muslim boys that couldn't handle getting their asses kicked at soccer by girls. Turns out this Catholic high school has a rule that says if there isn't a girl's team for a particular sport, the girl can play on the boy's team if they pass the tryout. And that's fair, so well done Catholics. But apparently it was an issue for an all-Muslim team that was pitted against them in a tournament. And strangely enough, it became a much bigger problem halfway through the game when it became clear that the Muslim team was going to get their asses handed to them. Now, unfortunately, the story doesn't have a happy ending. This tale of two girls' World Cup ends with the coach asking the young ladies on the team to sit out the second half and bow to the misogyny codified in the sacred babblings of an illiterate child molester. So way to do half of the right thing, Catholics, and none of the right thing, Muslims. And I bet Sepp Blatter played some role in this, so fuck him too. But like I said, that one is pretty mild compared to what we usually talk about on this segment. Not like the Muslim team threw acid on the team and lopped off their clits or anything. But don't worry, we'll ramp up the misogyny a bit as we move over to the UK to highlight some fucked up shit the Jews are doing there. Apparently, the Hasidic Brits are sick and tired of Saudi Arabia getting all the good press, so they decided they too would ban women from driving. In an effort to enforce this prehistoric notion of decency, they've even threatened to expel any students whose mothers drive them to school. In a depressingly submissive statement from some of the women targeted by the policy, they endorsed the new rules, agreeing that, quote, driving is a high-pressure activity where our values may be compromised by exposure to rage, bad language, and other inappropriate behavior, end quote. Well, sorry, ladies, but if you're responding to this edict with anything other than rage and bad language, that's inappropriate behavior. Moving right along to the Jesus portion of tonight's triad of patriarchy, we come to where else? Texas, where a Southern Baptist megachurch called the Village Church has elected to shun a member named Karen Hinckley for the unforgivable crime of filing to divorce her child porn addicted husband. She was placed under church discipline, whatever the hell that means, after failing to give the church a square shot at saving what God had brought together, which is apparently a much more egregious crime than beating off to pictures of naked five-year-olds since the church already forgave her husband. Now, apparently this fucked-up church requires their members to sign a contract guaranteeing they aren't gay or polyamorous, and one of the fine print stipulations is that they can't get divorced unless the church agrees that Jesus did everything he could to avoid it. When she failed to do that, the church put her on discipline. So she told them to fuck off and she quit. So they sent her a notice that she can't quit while she's on discipline. To which she reminded them that this isn't the 1300s and she'd do whatever the fuck she cared to. And finally, a tiny nugget of good news to close things out. As one of his final acts in office, outgoing Nigerian president Goodluck Jonathan pushed through legislation banning female genital mutilation in Africa's largest country. And even though a presidential order won't stop the process on its own, it's good to see any step in the right direction on that subject. So with that brief little uplifting twist, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath. 